All right, welcome to another Hunting Fool gear review. Um, today we're going to talk about the Vortex Fury 5000 10 by 42s versus the Leica Geovid HDRs 10 by 42s as well. So they're both a 10 by 42 glass. These are rated to 5,000 uh, yards, which is incredible. We've got a, a scenario set up where we can bounce off of canyon walls all the way out to. Well, there was distances I could not pick up with the Geovids, so we're gonna trust that these can pick those distances up. But today, uh, we're gonna just look for edge-to-edge -edge clarity in the glass and the speed at which it ranges reflective targets and non-reflective targets and the distances that they go to. And we'll also do a low light review. If you want a more comprehensive review of the specifications for each of these glasses, obviously you can check them out on each of their respective websites, but we just wanted to do a real world scenario of two popular glass, one that's quite a bit more from an MSRP point of view and one that's much more affordable and see what we get. So with that, we're gonna start bouncing off some targets and check them out. First up, the Leica Geovid HDRs. And I know there's a target out there right now I'm sitting on that I can't get it to pick up and it is reflective. Okay, I'm gonna try that same shot with the Furies. 2,537 yards. Hammered it just immediately. So I've tried to click that at least a dozen times with the Geovids and I don't get any reading at all on it. All right, now I'm gonna to try to pick up a non-reflective target on that. It's hunting a little for that. I'll work my way in to see where I can pick up my first non-reflective targets. There, I've got one at 1,951 yards, 2,050, 2,508 on a non-reflective. That's about as far as I can reach on the non-reflectives there. So now let's give the Geovids a shot. We'll see what yardage we can reel up with them. Okay, I picked up my first reflective target at 2,040 yards. Now at 1,830 yards, I'm picking it up instantaneously and repeatedly and never misses. And that's what I found with these. I've been running this glass for a couple of years now. It seems like at about 1800 yards or so uh, is about where I tend to run out of yardage on these. Now, a lot of people are gonna ask the question, why does that matter? You're not gonna shoot that far and that's accurate, but I think how it matters Let's say that I've spotted, let's say I'm a bow hunting. Obviously you don't need 2000 yards of range finding for, as a bow hunter. But let's say that I'm bow hunting and I've spotted a buck on one of these ridges that's just past another adjacent ridge. A lot of times it's nice to be able to range the target and then range a ridge that's a little bit closer and be able to subtract the distance and know whether or not you could use that as your opportunity to stock to that point and make your shot. And you can do that with obviously a rifle as well. So the more yardage you can get out of your rangefinder, I'm a big proponent of simply because it gives you more tools in your stocking kit to be able to uh, rely on when you're trying to put together a stock and close the gap. I'm hitting a target at about 350 yards right now just for frame of reference. And those Leicas are instantaneous. The Fury is a little slower. I would say probably it's, this is like instant is the second you click it and the Fury is probably half a second. Again, that's probably not something that matters. Um, Usually if you're gonna make a longer shot that requires a yardage estimation, you're not gonna be in that big of a hurry, but it is kind of a nice feature that you can click on it more repeatedly and quickly and get faster readouts off of the Leicas. Now, I think we'll move to uh, edge to edge clarity on the glass. For that, I'm gonna get both of them balanced nicely on the tripod. You can see I'm not running a tripod adapter, but I am gonna get them balanced on there nicely. That's why I can, I don't have two of those and I don't wanna interchange. So, but we will give them a fair shot by letting them balance on their own, on the glass. We're gonna concentrate in an area that's got some shadows and some brights and just wander around the edge of the glass with your eye just to uh, explore clarity. For the record, the, the, these glasses have been used for a couple of years, but they're, I've taken extremely good care of them. They've been in a case the whole time. There's no scratches and both lenses are crystal clear clean right now on both glasses. I'm gonna start with the Furies. Using this test, I'll also be able to weigh in on the overall field of view that each of the binoculars provide. I've got to give the Furies credit here. I know from a lot of glassing experience in the Leicas that I can sit in those binoculars all day 
and never get eye fatigue. I feel like my initial impression is I could have the same experience with the Furies. There's a little bit of parallaxing when I actually kind of move my head around. You get a little bit of parallax in this glass. I'm anxious to see uh, the comparison in the Leicas. One thing to consider when you're talking about binocular selection is you can get different, depending on the uh, coatings that they use on the lenses, you get like more reds, more greens, more like almost a blue, like a cold hue, depending on the co coatings. I'm colorblind with reds and greens. And so my eye prefers coatings that are, I guess, bring out more green and um, other people may not. So it is something to think about when you're making a glass selection. My initial impression is that the Leicas are a little bit more of a colder glass and the Furies are a little bit more warmer tones. I definitely get less parallaxing moving my head around in the Leicas. You're always going to get some and I certainly have some in the Leicas as well, but it, it is more noticeable in the Furies. I almost want to say when I look through the bottom of the glass, the Furies are clear. <laughs> Let me give that one more shot here real quick. Yeah, I think I get a little bit better edge-to-edge -edge clarity out of this glass, which does surprise me. Again, to go get it, the parallaxing is worse. As you're moving your head around to kind of check out the edges of the glass, The you look like you got a little bit of ocean turbulence going on there. I'm gonna confirm that one more time. Boy, no question. The Fury's clearer in the, you know, in the overall spectrum of things going clear out to the edge of the glass, which you don't normally do when you're, you know, when you're running a glass, the goal is to stay in the center of the lens, but there's times where it's nice to, you know, park your tripod and be able to kind of roam around the edge of the glass with your eyes. Wow, that is an incredibly clear glass. I'm impressed. Vortex. Because obviously these Leicas are one of the gold standards. Well, after giving these guys a pretty fair shake in some conditions that I think are excellent replication of what you would actually do on a hunting scenario, um, I am extremely impressed with the Vortex Fury. And to be honest, I set out not thinking I would necessarily be so. Um, obviously, Vortex's reputation is from a warranty and customer service point of view is second to none. And from an optics point of view, they've just been phenomenal for a reasonably price pointed glass, but it's glassing with the pros right here, neck and neck and edge to edge clarity. I think it's better. Um, for my personal color blindness, it brings out a little bit more warm tones that I actually happen to like. I feel like I can see better into some of the, particularly into the thick junipers that we're looking in. Uh, the knocks against it would be one, it's a little slower on the range find return time, a little bit of delay between clicking an object, even at close range. And two, it definitely has more parallax. When you move around in it, you feel like the ocean's moving around quite a bit. Any glass is gonna do that, but certainly less here with the, like a Geovids. But Either way, for more information, check out the website. Um, I think these glasses are a wonderful new contender in the rangefinding binocular field. And they're a lot smaller. I mean, from a compact point of view, when you just look at these two glasses side by side, you're talking about a much smaller glass. It'll fit in a smaller bino case, make less noise going in and out. Yeah, I think, uh, I think this glass deserves a hard look if you're shopping for a rangefinding binocular. Any good binocular review really requires a low light test. So we're out here in some really tough conditions. It's barely getting light and we're glassing back up inside of some caves, some really dark, some light contrast to dark where it makes it really hard to pick up detail inside of there. So we're gonna compare the two binoculars side by side in low light conditions and make our final recommendations. I don't think there's anything in that cave that I can't see with both glasses equally. Let me find another cave to look in that's even deeper. I would say after comparing these two in lower light, the color coatings on the lenses stand out a little bit more at low light than they do in bright light. Again, you're gonna get a warmer kind of reddish green tint out of the Fury HD 5000s from Vortex. And you're gonna get a cooler, bluer kind of light out of the Leica Geovid HDRs. It's really about preference, but as far as clarity and what you can see in low light, 
I am blown away by these Fury HD 5000s. I think for the value, I don't think you're gonna find a better glass. And I really have to give Vortex huge props for putting together such a great new player in the rangefinding binocular market.